One, two, three. Just give me patience. Yeah. Greetings, dear Z Pack, and welcome to Masterpiece Theater. I'm your host, Zed Dog MD, and this is Tom Heineber and Logan Stewart. Hello, and join us today while we'll be talking about butt stuff. Lots of butt stuff. Guys, in all seriousness, first off, I want to welcome you to Against Medical Advice, episode 23. Oh, whoa, whoa. Well, what? It's Sex Sunday, people. Do you know why? I'm gonna tell you why. Today we're gonna talk about teaching kids about the birds and the bees. Why? Because my Z pup, who is midway through nine, uh, AKA nine and a half, <clears throat> also known as nine and three quarters, is now asking directly about S-E-X, as oh. she calls it. Now, when, in my day, okay, my parents never even spake about any of that. I learned it all myself. I learned it from watching crappy satellite porn, which my dad thought was encrypted, but I learned how to hack. <laughs> uh, and I learned it from my friends at school, which means I thought you got pregnant through butt sex and uh, voodoo magic and sacrificing a lamb. Wait, why are you talking to the Z-Pups instead of uh, Mrs. Z? Just uh, out of curiosity here. Well, let, let's just put it this way, fear. <laughs> Plain and simple. So Mrs. Dog, who is an introvert, uh, is like, oh, Nina's asking about S-E-X, and the kids at school are telling her all kinds of stuff, like, you know, stuff goes in the butt, and then this happens, and then a baby comes out of your uh, belly button, and then you can't, and if you kiss, you can get pregnant, and all this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, that's what kids do, so what do you want me to do about it? Why aren't you telling her about it? And she's like, because that's like, um, no! And this, speed, again, it speaks to the kind of stigma and fear we still have about talking about sex in general, especially in this country. But with our kids, it becomes even crazier because part of us is like, oh no, my kid's never having sex. And that's one of the big sort of stigma uh, around, uh, sti stigmatizing elements that make it difficult even for pediatricians and people who specialize in this stuff to have conversations about sexually transmitted diseases, sexual intercourse, adolescent sex, and the HPV vaccine, which is key to potentially preventing some of the acquirable cancers uh, that, that happen when you catch this virus, human papillomavirus. So what I thought we'd talk about, and, and so Mrs. Dog is like, it's all on you, son. And I'm like, well, let's do it together. She's like, why? You're the guy who talks all day. You talk for a living. Talk to your daughter about sex. And you know, I'm gonna be quite honest there, Tommy Heinover. <laughs> I don't like any of this. <laughs> I feel like no matter how good you are as a communicator, as a man, you don't nope. want to talk to your little girl. No, nope. no, I don't. <laughs> and believe me, like I sat up last night going, okay, ah, what would I say? Like, should I talk about, you know, the 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 vagina and and the penis and ejaculation and <laughs> cis trans, you know, uh, 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 gender identity and gender expression and should I? And in the end, I was like, how about I just do this? He's gonna go, uh, don't have sex, and then turn around. And and, and honestly, I, I'm erring towards the latter because even for me, it, this is terrifying. And so then I thought, you know. <clears throat> Today, Logan sends me an article from the Huffington <laughs> Post, which means it's not an article. It's somebody's uh, insane opinion um, that was barely, uh, barely researched. And in fact, as I read it, I realized it, one of his research points was WebMD. WebMD, Z. WebMD, <laughs> and so it's written by Arky E, a contributor, and his credentials are debater, blogger, and social change activist. <laughs> and the title was, Parents, don't forget to include anal sex when having the talk with your children. And I was like, okay, this is interesting. And as I started to read it, I, uh, I realized, wait a minute, actually he has some points here because nowadays kids actually, you, when you talk about sex with your kids, when you're teaching them about the birds and the bees, or you're doing it in a comprehensive sex education class at school, or you know, you're doing it as part of a you know, uh, even, even uh, religious education where that may focus on abstinence, but you hope is more comprehensive than that because all the evidence guys, and I don't wanna hear any shit from people who are like, ow, just teach abstinence because God. Okay, listen to me. God wants to do things that actually work. And the evidence shows that teaching abstinence doesn't work for actually preventing 
uh, teen intercourse, preventing pregnancy, preventing ST, uh, sexually transmitted infections, whereas comprehensive sex education and having a good talk with your kids, whether it's at home or at school, has been shown to decrease the first onset of intercourse, so the first time you have sex, and the frequency of intercourse, the number of partners, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So as always, knowing is half the battle and education is important. Yo, quick aside. So I went to you know religious school most of my life. Yeah, you uh, did. Went to Catholic school, went to Lutheran school, and one time at Lutheran school, uh, we had an abstinence speaker come in and talk to us in the gym in front of the entire school. And she said, she gave this whole spiel about abstinence, and then she goes, now, who here, after hearing this whole thing, still wants to have sex. And me and like eight other eighth grade boys stood up, we're like, yo, yo, right here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she was like, congratulations. You all just had sex with each other, gentlemen, because STDs. And I was like, well played, bitch. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to swear on the show. <laughs> You're, you know, <clears throat> Tom's Catholic school education comes back to bite us in the ass like every single episode, <laughs> because he's like this one time in Catholic school. <laughs> This one time in Catholic school. And actually, Tom, you had a, you had a, because we were talking about, like, how are we going to do this talk today? And I'm going to go through actually more systematically, but I wanted to start by just saying that this is a stigmatized topic. And if you can laugh about it, if you can joke about it, if you can have fun while having the talk, or even having the talk about the talk, which is very meta, it's very inception, you're probably going to be more efficacious. And that's one of the fundamental premise premises of this show is that humor can be a teaching mechanism as well as a coping mechanism, as well as it kicks more butt, because we're on Sunday, we're trying not to curse. What do you think, Tom Heineberg? I agree. You, you had talked about the fact that many Catholic schoolgirls that you um, were, <laughs> that you went to school girls. with, tended to feel like anal intercourse was okay with the Lord. Anal sex is God's loophole, because it's not specifically forbade in the Bible. So you can get away with anal sex while remaining uh, Is that virginal in some girls' minds. Right. And it's a great loophole if you're a teenage boy. So you will not get smote. Yes. If you smite in the, in the buttocks. Yes, so I did know many Catholic school girls who were doing, um, who were doing creative methods of birth control, let's say. This is a, <laughs> one of the most sacred <laughs> Sundays we've spent together, Tom Heinover. So uh, in all seriousness, I wanna go through this carefully because now I'm preparing to have the talk with my daughter and my wife is turning the screws on me. She wants me to do it quickly because the kids are teaching her all kinds of lies. And honestly, I am a big believer in education. I wish I had Dr. Harry or a pediatrician or Jen Gunter, a sex specialist on the show to talk about this, but we come up with our topics like the morning of and I was like, I can't get these people in here. So let's do this. First of all, <clears throat> You have to understand that young people now, okay, so when do you even have the talk? Some people are talking about having it as early as two years old to at least talk about what the genitals are and this kind of thing, and at least start to broach the thing. That seems a little, I still feel funky about that, but being open about these issues and not, and calling, calling uh, genitals by their actual scientific names is never a terrible idea, right? Because kids start to learn that, there, there is a science behind the mystique and weirdness of their privates. Um, young women are now reaching puberty younger than ever. So, you know, we're talking like eight, nine, 10 years old. Uh, Dr. Harry is seeing a lot of uh, menarche. This is the first uh, onset of, of the menstrual cycle and breast bud development, which you know, can signify the beginning of um, puberty in very young girls. And there's a lot of controversy as to why this is happening, but let's just say it is happening. So having the conversation, because again, once you reach that stage, the hormones start to kick in, experimentation starts, and if you're not educated, you can end up with a lot of trouble, sexually transmitted illnesses, pregnancy, victimization, which Christy Columbus pointed out in the comments. Do they understand what consent means? for people to uh, fool around with each other. That, that's something that doesn't come naturally when you're at a concrete stage of development where there isn't a lot of abstract thinking, uh, and that's the first stage of adolescent uh, sexual development. This is perfect. Since you have two daughters, let's pull it from the text. How would you teach consent to either one of your daughters? I would teach them this. I would say if any boy wants to touch you, do anything with you, um, fool around, kiss you, go steady, uh, whatever it is, you just tell them that my daddy has a friend named Logan God damn who right. has lots of guns. Yep. <laughs> and he knows how to shoot you in ways that won't kill you immediately, <laughs> but will leave you impotent, 
uh, damaged <laughs> and people will look at you and will scream in horror involuntarily when they see your disfigured face and genitals. So that's, that's how I teach them. I mean, what would you do, Tom? Same. I would say that, you know, you as a young lady have the right to revoke consent at any time. So before the encounter, during the encounter, it's hard to do it after the encounter because it's already happened. But, you know, if at any point you have the right to say no and to stop what's going on. And also the old cliche, I, by the way, I can't believe Tom Heineber just schooled me on consent. <laughs> it's all um, the, the <laughs> I'm a gentle lover. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fact is that um, no also does mean no. So it's not a tease. It's not any of that. Consent is very clear. So that, that's something and for yeah. guys, too, because remember, consent, we're not, can, you can have consent before for a, like. If I had little boys, Logan has a little boy. Right. You got to teach them. You can have consent beforehand, and it can be revoked based on something you did or maybe something you didn't even do, but it can be revoked midway through an act or anything. So right, and, and you got to be always watching out for it to be pulled away. And, and not, not, not to forget that uh, we're being, and, and it's funny because in these articles they all say, let's be careful about not being too heteronormative. And right. again, people, this is a controversial idea, but the idea that you accept uh, any sort of, uh, remembering that in early adolescence in particular, a lot of uh, sexual uh, preference, et cetera, is rather fluid. So people experiment with same sex, they experiment with opposite sex, they experiment with masturbation, they experiment with all kinds of different things. And so it might be a consent issue between two guys. It might be a consent issue with the guy not wanting to do it and the girl pushing on it. Right. Uh, and you know, the more you sit on Instagram and watch the Kardashians flash their boobs, the more this normalization of aggressive sexual behavior may be part of the culture. So, but, but to, to kind of clarify, the iGen, this youngest generation now that's entering the teen years now and is younger than that, they're actually delaying intercourse. They're having less intercourse. It's actually 10% less than, uh, and actually absolute risk more than that right. has been decreasing because they're at home with their phones texting each other than not actually uh, doing Yeah, there's stuff. a lot more phone stuff, which leads to this whole right. thing of, you have to have this conversation about how the phone is not real life, and mm -hmm. what happens on the phone uh, is not what's going to happen in real life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's another thing, right? So let, let me go through a few facts here because, again, we're trying to, uh, we're trying to talk about butt stuff ultimately <laughs> because that's the goal of this show, but <laughs> it's about talking to your kids about um, sex. So we talked about early puberty. 40% um, of high school kids now report having uh, sexual intercourse and 30% report being currently sexually active. So it's a good percentage still. It used to be higher. The prevalence of sexual activity increases with age, rising 24% in ninth graders to 58%. So from 24%, so a quarter of kids had sex in ninth grade, to 58% in 12th graders. So by then about 60% of kids have had uh, intercourse. Um, and the trends, so rate of sexual activity has decreased. So 54% of people having sex down to 41% now over the, uh, 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 the period between 91, which is when I graduated high school, and 2015, which is when Tom graduated high school uh, <laughs> because he got his GED because he failed. 2007, <laughs> actually, people. So, oh, Tom. so um, the rates of sex with more than four persons have decreased from 19% to 12%. So a degree of quote unquote promiscuity has decreased if you want to use that term, which is still a weird term. So that being said, they also say about five to 10% of um, teens identify as lesbian, gay, or bisexual. Uh, over 10% of females and between two and 6% of men report having participated in same gender sexual activity. Uh, so, you know, and uh, so, so when you're, when you talk about this term heteronormative, meaning just only talking about heterosexual sex, you might be missing something, uh, a, a chance to inter intervene and keep somebody safe from a different type of sexual intercourse that you didn't think of didn't think to talk about or even mention. And there's this theory that even mentioning this stuff normalizes it and then your kid's gonna become gay or lesbian or bisexual and uh, that's horseshit. Yeah, that's just straight stupid. I mean, yeah. maybe we should ask Tad, Tad's gay. Yeah, Tad, listen, Tad. Oh, we have a Tad cam? We have Tad. I knew I was gay the minute I hit puberty because I saw Michael J. Fox on Family Ties that is heteronormative, <laughs> Logan. I cannot believe you showed that meme when I was talking about my first sexual fantasies about Michael J. Fox on Family Ties. I wanted to like Mallory. I really liked Alex. 
It was simple as that. See, Tad pretty much said it. Michelle Vasterling says, does anybody remember the Kinsey Report? And in the Kinsey Report, basically, it says that everybody has some degree of uh, bisexuality or homosexuality and that nobody is uh, fully straight, or it's very rare that people that are fully straight. So basically, human sexuality is a continuum. Right. Like, and uh, I'm really attracted to, uh, you know, like Cam Newton. I think he's a good-looking <laughs> man, all right? And uh, that's why I bet on the Panthers today. I, Cam. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. If Tyreezy showed up right now on a motorcycle like he was in, in Unbreak My Heart with that's Tony a, Braxton. Ty, that's Ty, Tyreezy. It's not Tyreezy. Ty 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 <laughs> Wait a minute. So all this time I've been masturbating thinking about Tyreezy and it wasn't even right? <laughs> <laughs> this is really terrible. Um... This was supposed to be a clean show. Well, no, we're talking about sex. It can't be totally clean. We have to talk about Tyreezy masturbation. Um, Christy Columbus is lecturing us for uh, uh, being heteronormative. Um, Jamie Giblin, Z Dog, I don't exactly agree with that. My oldest came to me and we had a major discussion on that. Um, I don't know what we're talking about there, Jamie, but uh, thank you for the comment. Uh, Masters and Johnsons, though, Alex Wu. Alex, you weren't even born when Masters and Johnsons came out, man. You're like 20 years old, son. Don't you don't even, you, I'm, I, Alex Wu, you shouldn't even be having intercourse because you're way too young. You're way too young to be having intercourse, all right? Anyways, back to this. So there, when, when, you, when you're when you looking at adolescents, you're trying to talk to them, you gotta understand that sexuality is a bit fluid. Uh, it is a continuum. Gender identity is being formed. So how do they innately see themselves, you know, male, female, or something on a continuum in between? And I don't know that this is particularly controversial. There's a lot of moral posturing around this, but the truth is, this is how people self-describe. Uh, gender role, so in other words, how does society expect you to behave, right? Like, I expect Tom to occasionally dress in drag because he's on our show, and he does. He becomes Teresa Heineber, and it's a beautiful thing. It I really identify is. as her. Uh, yeah, you kind of do, and you develop vocal fry and breast buds <laughs> and all kinds of things that happen. I've seen it. That's right. I've seen it. Don't yeah. think I haven't fantasized about it. And I think that older rich men should just give me Mercedes and stuff. Like, and yeah, you see, like, it is an air. Anyway. I am an older rich man. <laughs> <laughs> well, where's my Benz? You know? Well, I think I do a good job on this show. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> no means no, Tom Heineber, Teresa Heineber. <laughs> um, and gender expression, which is how the gender, how your idea of gender is actually presented to the outside world. Sometimes your gender expression is actually not what your actual gender identity is, what you feel you are. And you look at someone like um, uh, Bruce Jenner, who is now, what's his, her name? Uh, now? Caitlin. Caitlin Jenner Caitlin. now. She identifies to the world as female. Uh, and so, again, you have to understand, you cannot, you have to watch out for the stigma around this. You have to have an open discussion. And if the kids are giggling and laughing, then you can giggle and laugh with them. But I think that, that you, again, and the other thing is being judgmental when you have this conversation is probably a really, really, really bad idea. You can be firm about certain things like the risk of sexually transmitted infection, which is a predominantly adolescent affliction. So over half of uh, STIs uh, are, uh, occur in adolescence. And that's hugely disproportionate to the amount of population there is because children are experimenting, they don't understand yet. Teen pregnancy, which has been on the decline, 50% of unwanted pregnancy in teens is due to the failure of contraception. They're using it, but they're effing it up. So they're using it wrong. They're using condoms, which are notoriously breaky and, and, and goopy and not entirely effective, 80%. I gotta say, who's breaking condoms, yeah. man? I've never <laughs> broken a condom. Well, I mean, you know. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's most of them just aren't big enough, and <laughs> they, just, they just pop. See, my pull-out game is strong. <laughs> Hey, pull and pray is not to be uh, not to be trifled with. When done correctly, it actually has. <laughs> so, but all joking aside, like you know, longer act. So, failure to take the pill regularly uh, can cause pill failure, right? Failure of contraception. So, the depot forms, the injectable forms of estrogen-related uh, contraception, intrauterine devices. Those are actually considered first line for teens because they act. Uh, in a longer way, and it's hard to screw them up. Do, uh, does a depot have negative effects, though, Z? Yeah, I mean, every, every, every approach to contraception has its downsides, and depot can have nausea, acne, worsening. Some people's acne gets better. Some people have improvement in certain symptoms, but yeah, I mean, it's a hormone that you're injecting. My uh, wife was on it, and I know she noticed that uh, her, she has ovarian cysts. Yeah. And when she got on it, they came back. 
That's interesting because sometimes, and, and again, we need an obstetrician on the show to talk about the relationship between high dose and low dose estrogen mm. and ovarian cysts, mm. things like fibroids, things like heavy menstrual bleeding. Mm. There is a direct relationship that we'll get into another show. It's a great question. Um, so yeah, all these things have, have concerning blood clot, if you're smoking, if these kids are smoking like uh, kids used to do in the old days. And here's the question, Tom Heinerberg, we don't know the answer to this yet. Does vaping increase the risk of blood clot with contraception? Cigarettes do, very much do. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, when I think about my kids, What's I What's the mechanism of action? Uh, it's, I'm trying to remember now, I wonder if it was a, 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 a protein C and S deficiency, I forget what it is, it's triggered by estrogen. If you guys know, let us know. So I'm not gonna say, cause I don't know. But there is a purported mechanism, but nobody really knows. Mm. But it's real, it's legit. Um, and so you don't wanna smoke while you're on contraception. Contraception does increase your risk of uh, blood clot but it's generally a small risk in the population, but it's w much worse if you smoke with, with those pills. Yeah, um, alcohol is obviously bad for birth control, correct? Well, it's bad because you end up forgetting to take the pill. You have sex with uh, people that you wouldn't normally have sex with. <laughs> but other than that, I don't think it directly interferes with uh, the contraceptive mechanism oh, okay. yeah, that I know of, unless I'm missing something. So um, let's keep going here. Now, someone says, Depot caused me to feel very depressed, says Sarah Wells. Now I've had uh, mm. Morena for the last 10 years and my daughter uh, chose one when she was 17. So, you know, Sarah, tell us how you had that conversation with your daughter because, so Depot killed the libido, ultimately killed my marriage, says Ashley Johnson. So some people find changes in, um, in sexual drive, changes in vaginal secretion. So it's harder, you know, harder to uh, create lubrication, et cetera. Now there are ways to get around that obviously, but uh, that's another, it's a talk for something else. Now, when you're, again, when you're having the talk with your kids, part of the reason we're doing this show is this article, <laughs> article, this blog in the Huffington Post was saying, since a lot of kids are um, kind of experimenting with anal sex as a way to avoid vaginal sex and, the, and what they perceive the downside, which is pregnancy, et cetera, or it's um, non-heterosexual sex or what have you, they, or it's the Catholic schoolgirl thing that Tom talked about. Oh, yeah. You <laughs> should probably <laughs> talk about the uh, risks and benefits of anal sex and some of the things they point out in this, which are pulled right from WebMT, <laughs> woo, God, are things like, <clears throat> you know, if, you're not, if there isn't uh, pr appropriate lubrication used, you can cause anal tearing, anal fissures, introduction of bacteria, both into the bloodstream of the recipient of anal sex, and also urinary tract infections in the um, person who is inserting something into the anus. So being aware of the infection risk, the STI risk, so human papillomavirus, anal warts, anal cancers ultimately can happen, so you definitely wanna vaccinate your kids, but then condom, 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 uh, and still, even if it's female, you know, birth control, because if it only takes a single drop of, of semen to actually cause impregnation, and if anything leaks out or anything happens like that, you can actually get pregnant still. So being careful, it's, uh, it's rare, but it can happen, and you don't want it uh, to happen. So educating about that. Now, it's interesting, because some people douche in their butthole. <laughs> And mm. Where's this going? <laughs> according to Dr. Uh, Jeffrey Klausner, douching could have serious negative effects. First, frequent douching may compromise the natural protective fluid and lining of your anus. Wait, isn't a butt douche just called an enema? Well, that's what I thought, but apparently you can also use vaginal douches. Huh. Yeah. Huh. And, uh, hmm. The more but, you know. But apparently, yeah, the more you know, but <laughs> apparently you shouldn't because the body stops making proper lubricant, becomes more prone to tears and infection, which will make even passing stool or even sitting extremely uncomfortable. So again, um, and, and the douche uh, sort of shape is probably, it may not be conducive for rectal insertion. And the nurses in the audience kind of know about you know, putting stuff in people's butts because they're putting in suppositories, they're putting in enemas. Hey, <laughs> is, that, is that from Lost? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lost in the butt. Um, <laughs> The other risk they talk about is you know, weakening the anal sphincter, but you can actually improve that with Kegel exercises and other exercises. So again, it's not saying don't do it in the butt, it's saying understand that that's a kind of talk that you need to have about risks and benefits. True or false, that. it's much easier for the receiving partner of anal sex to contract an STD than it is for the partner who's uh, penetrating. You know, I actually don't know the statistics on this, ZPAC, if you can fill us in on this. 
Now, if working from first principles, it seems that the recipient has more opportunity to have tears and uh, other issues where the introduction of bacteria is. And it's similar to um, female uh, acquisition of HIV. Uh, you have a lot more stuff that can, a mucous membrane contact where you can get transmission of viruses and bacteria. So that's my instinct on that, but I don't know the statistics and I wish I did. Now question Z. Stephanie said her daughter just recently told her, her 15 year old daughter recently told her she lost her virginity. Mm -hmm. And then Stephanie said, I'm, I'm getting you an IUD, end of conversation, IUD, end of conversation. What, at what age, now is this part of your sex talk that you have with the Z-Pups? At what age do you say, hey, you know, this is an okay age to start experimenting. These are an okay ages for this boundary or, you know, to start doing this kind of thing. Do you, do you broach that at all or do you just be like a creeped out dad and be like, I don't want to stop. <laughs> 40. 40 is a good number for you. 40 or never. Whenever I'm dead. <laughs> you know, it's interesting because the literature seems to is kind of suggest that there are three stages of adolescence. There's that early experimentation stage where you're first coming online with puberty. And that's where it's a lot, of, kids will actually, they'll discover masturbation. They will fool around with same sex or opposite set pe sex people in a very touchy, slappy, silly way. Right. Where they're like, oh, that feels good. But there isn't a lot of, it's very concrete and there isn't a lot of um, understanding of what's going on. And even at that stage, obviously sex can happen. Also, you can get taken advantage of. You can be yeah. raped, you can be victimized, either men or women. And so I would actually consider if, if we have the talk and my daughter came to me and said, I'm, there's this kid and this happened or that happened or this happened. I would really consider, okay, now we'll, we need to talk to your pediatrician about getting you on something in a depot form because just to, as a backup, but you, if that ever happens, you're using a condom. And also I would like you to talk to me about it because having an open conversation, you know, and again, it's a brave new world and it's terrifying to me and I wanna punch or kill or burn alive at the stake <laughs> any child who touches my child in any sexual way, but you have to be realistic, right? The second phase of this is a more, um, of adolescent uh, sexual sexuality is a more romanticized like I have a, a, a you know I'm going steady with this person the serial monogamy you're in love you're gonna right. run away Thelma and Louise style you're watching these movies and you're crying and you're you know holding hands and all that and that's a that's another stage where the experimenting get you know heavy petting now here's the thing oral yes. becomes a big thing and the data shows that if you do oral you're very likely to end up having sac vaginal intercourse in the sh near future. Yeah. So it, 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 is, it is not a bypass for, now, you know, I've heard in, in certain Mormon populations, there's this thing called marinating. Yeah. Yeah, tell me about marinating. Marinating is when you stick it in, but you don't move. You just marinate. And uh, if you don't move, it's not sinful. Uh, so yeah, that's marinating. And uh, the Mormons do it, apparently. What the fuck? <laughs> no, I don't have. I don't, <laughs> I don't have daughters, right? But if I did, I think what I would tell them on the age topic is, I don't know any girls from when I was growing up who were unhappy that they waited. That's what. That's all I would say. Yeah, that's that's brilliant. That's brilliant, and that's what I'm going to tell my daughter is, you will never be unhappy that you waited ever, yeah. ever. Um, and, and here's the thing. Oh, by the way, so Autumn Brown now for says. for my boys, if I had a boy, I'd be like, you need to go out there and get, get some. It. Come <laughs> yeah, on, boy. Get it. Get it. What you doing? I got I'm boys. sorry. I'm perpetuating rape culture. That was wrong. Yes, Whatever. that's pretty standard for you, Tom Heineber. Um, Autumn Braun says, uh, I marinate all the time. Uh, Jessica Ra Ranahan says, it was a struggle to get the IUD without previous pregnancy and over the age of 21, which is insane to me. The argument was insane from the provider. You have a shitty provider, Jessica. Uh, and by the way, we can call them a provider because we do want to belittle them as much as possible. Um, listen, you, 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 you really ought to advocate the type of um, preventative contraception that's going to work best for the patient at hand. And uh, these longer acting mechanisms that are fairly safe and effective are really considered to be the best things for, for most people in that, in that situation, unless there's something weird going on or something else or some other exceptions. I got um, another anecdotal question for you real quick. Come with it. Um, if you had boys, how would you address the issue of porn? And then consequently, I guess, how would you address it now that you have girls? So this is the thing. So there's a availability now of porn yeah. that was, is un, un, 
unprecedented in the history of mankind. Y'all think I'm young, but I'm so old that I remember when porn was free, or por water was free and porn wasn't. Yep. I screwed up my joke. Screwed up your joke, Tom. It was worth a try, though. No, man, I had the penthouse and the brown paper bag that was a source of masturbation for probably a good decade. That's right. One penthouse. Yeah, that's all and you need. The girl on the Sears catalog in the, with the raft. You know? Dude. She's in the bikini. And you know what? You can spray a little water on the page and think maybe it's like a wet t-shirt thing, but it doesn't work. I tried. It just melted the page. So you know, this is what you do when you're 10 or 11 or 12. It's just what you do. Um, what, did I do something wrong? <laughs> there you go. Was it sounding crappy? Yeah, you're like yelling in it. You're yelling. <laughs> um, so, Anyways. you know, the, the, the way I would think about, about porn is I would warn my kids that Th there's a desensitization that goes on to the reality of what sex is. Sex is uh, 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 not, you know, uh, what, you, what you necessarily see on the porn sites. It's not constantly changing images. It's not constantly changing positions. It's not, I mean, unless you're me, in which case, you know. <laughs> no, it's really not. And so guys are getting desensitized. They're having trouble maintaining erections with real life girls. Yeah. Because they're, they need that constant stimula That's right. stimulus. Yeah. And it's, it's a huge problem. So well, you have Alyssa to have a Alyssa says, uh, at what age do boys think about doing this? It's earlier. Ten. It's pretty, earlier than you think. It's pretty early. Earlier. They start exploring with it around 10. I would say it gets serious around 12. Let's, let's just say this. The <laughs> 1984 Olympics happened. Mary Lou Retton was a gymnast at the time. That's all I'm going to say. Let's just say... It's my uh, earliest memories of women. No 14-year-old boy needs an hour-long shower. They don't need it. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. If you knock um, on the door and there's a, I'm in here, I'm in here. <laughs> Probably not a good sign. <laughs> uh, we had a comment um, from uh, a Mormon gentleman who said, no, Mormons don't marinate. Ki Mormon children who have left their faith or who do not, have not connected with their faith, marinate. So apparently it's not okay to marinate. Right. Um, <laughs> I just heard about it. I don't know that Mormons do that. I just think it's funny. <laughs> wait, wait, so you made that up? <laughs> well, no, I, I read an article about it. I read an article. Are you sure it was Mormons? <laughs> it wasn't just any religious, uh, religious group? I think it was specifically Mormons. Oh. Yeah. Like, I know that if you're, like, uh, in Islam, you do, like, a lot of gay stuff. But you then in you, Islam. But then you stone gays because you feel bad about your gayness. <laughs> now you're just making shit up, Tom Oliver. <laughs> Um, this is Sunday. Have some respect for those <laughs> with uh, faith. Um, my daughter told me she had sex for the first time at age 16, says Linda Lichter. Uh, two weeks after it happened, I wish I had talk she had talked to me first, but at least she came to me. That's true, Linda. The following week, we went to my ob and had a Nexplanon implant placed. We decided that since it's good for three years, there's no need to worry about her forgetting to take a pill, Linda Lichter. That's exactly correct, but I hope you also had conversations about uh, sexually transmitted infections because HIV, gonorrhea, herpes, um, uh, chlamydia, these diseases have come back with a vengeance and condoms aren't perfect but they are better than nothing for preventing them. So we don't want to forget that. We also want to make sure that you had vaccinated her uh, for HPV because that is one way you can prevent future HPV related cancer, at least with the strains that are covered and all the BS that you hear on uh, the internet about this uh, vaccine being dangerous and all that, it's exactly that, it's BS and it's been looked at. So yeah. I'm giving it, Mike, both Z pups are getting that vaccine the minute they're old enough to get it. Um, and then I'm gonna take it just for fun, just to watch myself turn autistic in real time. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. by the way, you know they're working on a heroin vaccine right now? Mm. I heard about this. Yeah. 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 But then I looked it up, and apparently you can't get high. So it's like, what's the point? Yeah, why? <laughs> I mean, why do it, <laughs> Tom Heinover? So it's interesting because in this article, uh, article in this blog post on the Huffington Post by uh, the blogger and debater and social activist, um, they talked about Teen Vogue ran an, uh, a piece on teen butt sex. Yeah, for people that don't know, Teen Vogue is hella woke, okay? <laughs> That's true. Look it up. That's a hashtag, Logan. Teen Vogue is woke, son. Uh, yeah, no, Teen Vogue pushed the limits of modern sensibilities and said, okay, if you're going to have uh, anal intercourse, here's how you do it for teens. Wow. <laughs> and uh, this is what ended up happening. Uh, let me show on the Tad Cam the image here. So 
let me read this carefully. It says, mom, uh, mom burning Teen Vogue magazine um, over the butt sex thing. <laughs> so it, it became like this, this famous Instagram mom was like, oh, hell no, and started burning Teen Vogue. And uh, so, you know, the culture wars are alive and well, but I think there, there is an appropriate concern among a lot of people that are we, are, are, we, are we creating more trouble than we're not. But all the data seems to say when you teach people about shit, they're hella woke. They yeah. actually behave differently. They modulate their behavior in a way that is not contrary to what you would expect. You would expect them to actually behave a little bit better. Even the drug uh, rehab programs like D.A.R.E., I mean, the drug, drug, initially they do cause people to back, but then they come back with a vengeance. Right. Because, you know, and again, we haven't seen this in the sex ed space, so. But it's like the classic, the Catholic schoolgirl trope, which is basically, you know. Verboten. Everybody, everybody knew that girl who was, you know. <laughs> they, you know, they, they'd been so repressed that they rebounded hard the other direction. Yeah, and uh, that definitely happens to people. You know, oh, yeah. <laughs> one thing is is conceptualizing the sex talk as this one time, and you just talk about it once, and you go, "Here's a download of all the information you need to know about butts and penises and vaginas," and you take this and you run with this for the rest of your life, Z-Pup. Is that the wrong way? To do it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is probably the best point you brought up because it is an ongoing discussion. You really have to be real with your kids and have a have. Develop a trust, because look, teens are crazy. Teens are crazy. They're gonna do risk-taking behavior. They're gonna do shit you don't really like. They're gonna do dangerous stuff. If you are the person that they can still come to without feeling judged or scared or any of that, then they are gonna come to you. And you should be that person if you're a parent. At least one of the parents should be that person. Because honestly, I want my kids to come to me with this stuff. I want them to tell me such and such did this or that, or I, I did this and now I don't know what to do. I want them to come to me for that. And, and that means having an open line of communication. I'm, I'm not, when I teach Z-Pup, and you know what's interesting, Tom? You're gonna not believe this. Mrs. Dog was like, why don't you, she's so desperate for Z-Pup to get this talk from me, because I've been stalling, that she's like, why don't you have Z-Pup on the show today and you give her the talk live yeah. on TV? And I was like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna <laughs> tell you something right now. She turns 13. This is a permanent thing on the internet. And yeah. all her friends are like, oh, that's where you learned about the birds and the butts from your dad on, on the internet. That's true. And then she yeah, finally was like, bad. That's bad. oh yeah, that's probably not a good idea. Yeah. And they'll be like, who was that handsome guy in the corner making wiener jokes? Cause the 13 year old stuff. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, Tom. <laughs> Wait. It's this guy right here. <laughs> 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 oh, See, that's good. You're being a good dad because you were like, yeah, I'm not going to do that yeah. to you. No, believe me, it would have gotten a lot of views right. and it would have been the wrong thing to do because she, and she would have done it too. Z-Pup always wants to be on the show. Yeah. And she's like, wait, I can learn about S-E-X live in front of hundreds of people and like 80,000 people on the replay. And, and, and I'm like, sure. She's like, when do we do it? <laughs> I think it's safe to say that you have a very healthy, well-adjusted child who's yes, still spelling it out. You know? <laughs> <laughs> she is. She is only nine. Do you have to have to talk with girls younger than boys because girls mature faster yeah, than boys? Yeah, there, there's talk about this. I would say have have the talk at the same time, honestly. Same time. Yeah, but but it's true. I girls do know, mature. Man. I had sex education in fifth grade and went over your head. There was this like they played this animation of just the wiener getting hard, and it was like, <laughs> <laughs> and we were all such loud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still laugh when I think about it. Is it 28 years old? <laughs> what, I, what I'm gonna say, Tom, is nothing has changed. There's no age when you wouldn't have giggled at that. Like even just describing it right now, I'm like, <laughs> oh my god. Let's read some comments here. Um, let's see. Liz Mangieri says, Z-Pup Prime would have killed you later on. I know it. Uh, she needs to learn the word no and to use it often, Christy Columbus. Uh, well, she uses it on me all the time, so I know it's, uh, whenever she wants anything, I'm like, she, uh, she uh, I, whenever, no, sorry, whenever I want anything, like, go clean your room, go wash the dishes, go to your church, she's like, no, 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 no. Um, Gail Card, so she's gotten a hang of that already. Gail Cardoza, she reminds me of her father, older Z-Pup. Am I an older Z-Pup? Yeah, you're the yeah, old Elvis. I, I kind of am the eldest. Lisa says, um, I have told my girls about sex so much they were tired of hearing it, maybe even a bit embarrassed with me. I think, I think probably Lisa's doing it right. That's yeah. probably the right yeah. way to do it. Yeah. You want them to be embarrassed so they're just like, oh, I don't even want to think about sex right now. Uh, Mom, Mom, I know about diaphragms. Jeez. Gosh. 
Every time we're having dinner and you talk about dicks and butts. I don't understand. Gosh. Um, my, t- my daughter and I uh, have been having age-appropriate talks about puberty, reproduction, and sex since she was three or four, Laura Cathcart. When she started her period this summer, she came to me very calmly and just asked if periods can cause some nausea. I said yes, and then she asked for a pad. She was very well prepared for what was happening. Wow, that's fantastic. I love that story. Pew, 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 says Cindy, Cynthia Griffin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie O'Donnell, frontal cortex isn't developed yet, so they have horrible decision-making skills. Absolutely. My God, I did some shit when I was a kid. Logan's like, just cooled off like three months ago. I know. He came to me and Z and he was like, yo, guys, how do I get out of debt and put my financial future <laughs> in order? And we were like, damn, I think he's finally ready. And Free frontal cortex. I'm over cool. the pull and pray. <laughs> that, that's, oh, she's done with pull and pray, <laughs> whereas I'm sitting in the corner going, pew, pew, pew. Uh, what do you think, Tom Heinover? Have we covered the main elements of this? Or are there other things we should talk about? Listen, embarrassed parents of the nation, just share this podcast with your kids. Yes, and you don't even have to have the sex no, talk. It's right here. You know? This? this? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's right. Wieners. Butts. Butts. All kinds of stuff. The JJs. The JJs. Yeah. That's hey, at what point do you tell your daughters about bejazzling? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's when you put um, uh, rhinestones around the hoo <laughs> Is this a Teresa Heinover thing? No, 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 no. You get, you get a little bedazzled. It's like bedazzling, but it's bedazzling. So you bedazzle your vajay Yeah. Hell yeah. Wow, that sounds like a recipe for toxic shock mm-hmm. syndrome. Does it go in the vajay or on the Just peripheral? around. Oh, okay. Just around the vajay. Just around the labia mm-hmm. minora and majora, because you do want to use the technical terms when discussing with your children. That's, That's important. Right. Keep it on the scientific, but also understand to teach them the terms they might hear at school. Baby. Alexander Wu like, says, we want uh, more live casts about sex. Alexander Wu, we just taught you about sex, bro. Yeah. Now bro, you know, man. Now you know, Wu. Now Woo. you know, man. Now you know. Let us know how that goes. That's a hashtag. <laughs> now you know, Wu. Now you know, Wu. <laughs> uh, guys, do me a favor. Hit share. Share this with your kids. Hit like. Tell your friends about the show because we want to grow to show. You guys are kind enough to spend your Sunday when there's football going on. Isn't there football going on or not yet? Hell yeah. Oh yeah. We're debating guys, tell us too, should we kill the Sunday show and just go Monday through Friday hardcore with content and shows and take the weekend off during football season? Because if punks aren't gonna watch us, then you know, is it worth uh, cutting into our family time to do the show? If it is, if you like this, if you love the Sunday action, let us know, especially people who are like on the down low, not wanting to watch the football, but are pretending to watch the football, but are really like, yo, it's Z Dog MD. You know what I mean? Is there anyone like that? There's no one like that. That's right. Yeah. They're all saying kickoffs in 10 minutes, Z. But if you're like me and you're like, <laughs> go pack, go, then let's do this thing. You know what I'm saying? Go! By the way, how did the Packers Seahawks game turn out? Somebody tell you, boy, come on. Go! Um, the Raiders won something. The Raiders. <laughs> the Raiders did win. Gets Tennessee. Anyway, uh, this has gotten less about sex and more <laughs> about football. Same thing. Sex, butt sex. Talk about it. <laughs> we out. One, two, three. Just give me patience. Yeah. I knew I was gay. That's all I'm saying. When I was young, it just came to me just like that. Poof.